after the climb of day one, the rain of day two, and the emotions of day three, we finally awoke the morning of day four. There's something special about today, as this is the day that we will complete the Great Allegheny Passage. The excitement and adrenaline alone are enough to propel us to the end of this trail. But so is the fact that we are coming into familiar territory. About halfway through our day, we will reach the point where we have spent many, many hours training for this journey. The miles between Pittsburgh and McKeesport have basically become second nature. Once we reach there, there will be no stopping us. Just a few miles outside of West Newton, around mile marker 119, you come to the Red Waterfall. Water's been flowing over this hillside from underground mines for many years. This water contains so much acid and iron that it's actually turned the rocks red. Ocean Coal Company established several mines in this area around 1900. It is believed that these mines are the direct cause of the pollution. Although these waterfalls are mesmerizing, it's about time I try and catch up with the rest of my team. Boston is a great trail town. It has restrooms, places to shop and eat, and has its own visitor center. 
But most importantly, just about a mile past there, the trail transforms from the crushed limestone to asphalt. But no sooner does that smile hit your face, you begin a couple short, steep climbs before descending down into the outskirts of McKeesport. Cycling the Great Allegheny Passage offers so many spectacular things. I took 10 of our many, many highlights and listed them for you. This list was compiled in order of our ride from Cumberland to Pittsburgh. The Western Maryland Railway Station is the starting point for those heading to Pittsburgh. Inside are restrooms, a gift shop, and a scaled down version of the mule powered canal boats. It's also where you would catch a ride on the Mountain Thunder, the locomotive that takes passenger cars 16 miles to Frostburg. The Big Savage Tunnel was renovated for $12.5 million and is crucial to the success of the trail. There's no way around it and it takes the better part of an hour to walk a bike up and over it. Just before you enter the tunnel you can look to the right and see how far you've come in distance from Cumberland. Although there are more than 130 miles to go, it invokes a sense of accomplishment. At nearly 2,400 feet, the Eastern Continental Divide is the highest point on the trail. And on both sides are colorful murals. Not to mention now that you do get to enjoy some downhill as you journey towards Pittsburgh. The Salisbury Viaduct is 100 feet high and stretches nearly 1,900 feet across the Castleman River Valley. The funny thing is, it's actually closer to Myersdale than the actual town of Salisbury. From here you can see the first eight wind turbines erected in southwestern PA. The towers are 200 feet high and the blades are 95 feet long and weigh nearly 5 tons. The Pinkerton High Bridge offers great views of the surrounding mountains, especially in the fall. To reach it, we cycled the Pinkerton Low Bridge and then the 1.5 miles around what is known as the Pinkerton Horn. These tree tunnels are formed by the interlocking branches of the trees that are arched over the right of way. They are cool and refreshing in the hot weather. These tunnels allow riders to appreciate the beauty all around them, no matter what the season. Ohio Pile is a trail town like no other. It is known for attracting cyclists, whitewater enthusiasts, and guests just visiting for the day. The visitor center is in a former railway station and it sits just beside the trail. Right around it is the award-winning Ohio Pile Low Bridge that cyclists use to reach the Ferncliff Peninsula and then the Ohio Pile High Bridge. The latter offers upstream and downstream views of the Yacht's famous whitewater. Although it is possible to bike to Falling Water in Kentunk Knob, the two lane roads leading to each home are very narrow and dangerous. There are many shuttle options available and is recommended to use one. The Homestead Pump House was the site of a very violent strike in the late 1800s. The site today now offers parking, bike racks, benches, picnic tables, and restroom facilities in the nearby water tower. The pump house is home to the Rivers of Steel Heritage Market and is open to the public from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the first and third Sundays of the month running April to September. The Great Allegheny Passage follows the former right-of-way 
of the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad from Connellsville to Pittsburgh. The development and the nearby Southside neighborhood offer a variety of overnight accommodations, restaurants, and entertainment venues. Point State Park marks the end of the Great Allegheny Passage. To find the marker, go to the very tip of the park where the three rivers meet. Make sure to take some time to also enjoy the surrounding area as it is very beautiful, especially in the fall.
It's amazing to get the chance to ride across the hot metal bridge and think back to what the industry was like in the past. This bridge was once where trains carried molten metal across the river. And the last time that happened was in 1993. Standing upon the bridge, you can see the south side and portions of the downtown. Cycling across this bridge is like pedaling through history. <laughs>